Um, because most of us, we're not trying to be 25. Look, you could not pay me. <laughs> <laughs> to go back and be 25. You know what I mean? So we're not trying to do that. We're not trying to revisit our youth. However, we are trying to be the best version of ourselves, right? Hello, hello. So today I am going to be sharing with you some of my tips that I have for staying young, staying healthy, staying fit for those of us over 40, right? Um, so let's get into it. Um, uh, well, let me just let me give you some background information, right? Um, so for those of you who maybe don't watch my channel, I am 44 years old and I do have three grown children. So my kids are 27, 20 and 18 grown, right? Um, I've had a full career, a normal life. <laughs> um, I've worked um, for the last... 25 years <laughs> in my career field um, I've been married in the past I'm happily divorced but I was married for 20 plus years etc um, and the reason why I'm telling you that is not because you're interested in knowing my business I realize that that's not what you're interested in I'm telling you that just for context because I think sometimes um, when I see other people making these videos, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, you've clearly had uh, an easy life or you're you're not like me. So therefore, what you're saying maybe not doesn't apply. But I want to say that just because I'm a regular, regular person, right? I'm a regular average woman, just like you. But I have found over the years some things that I found that have been very, very helpful to me in order to um, maintain my health overall, to maintain my fitness level, and to just help me feel my best even with time and with age. And I feel that they'll be helpful for you as well. And it doesn't require that you've had um, some unusually easy, <laughs> easy life, right? Um, and I just feel that in general, that in particular for us as women and for us as black women in particular, um, that there are some stresses and some things that we deal with that um, are unique. And we do have some opportunities where we can, um, you know, we can make some adjustments and make some changes just to be the best version of ourselves. Um, because most of us, we're not trying to be 25. Look, you could not pay me. <laughs> <laughs> to go back and be 25 you know what I mean so we're not trying to do that we're not trying to revisit our youth however we are trying to be the best version of ourselves right so with that being said let me get into some of these tips and I yes I am going to be looking at my notes because there are some things that I have um, learned and incorporated um, in my lifestyle um, just because in my history of being a nurse and a nurse practitioner I've seen a lot of things in healthcare, chronic disease illness and the effects that these things have on us and on our bodies and on our health and mental health and fitness and I've I think just naturally incorporated some of these things into my life over the years in order to try and um, be a healthy person because I know that when I feel healthy I am going to enjoy my life um, and I want you to do the same right so tip number one um, that I've incorporated in my life for years is to drink water and to avoid drinking your calories um, so for me for the most part many many years ago um, I really just made it a priority to drink water I think it's important to drink water and to avoid drinking your calories we all need calories on a daily basis we all are gonna get our calories from somewhere um, and I personally have found that it's most beneficial for me to get my calories through food and not through beverages. So generally that means drinking water, right? And then if you are going to get calories, get them in through food because I feel like that's the best source, right? Food, uh, eating food is, is, is pleasurable. It helps to satisfy your appetite. It makes you feel be better. It gives you the nutrition that you need. Um, but when you're drinking calories, it's almost like you're dumping excessive amounts of calories and sugar uh, into your body that really don't give you much nutritional benefit, to be honest. So um, yes, so just drink water and try not to drink your calories. Get your calories through food. Get your nutrition through food. Okay, 
Uh, the next one that I think has really helped me over the years, in particular with like maintaining a normal weight, I've never really struggled with weight. And I know that that's a major issue, especially with time and over age. And yeah, um, some people would say, oh, genetics, clearly genetics plays a role. I'm not going to dis dismiss the fact that genetics play a role, but I want to just be honest with y'all. I don't come from a, a family that's genetically a uh, small frame. <laughs> So, so don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. Um, that's not the case in my particular family. If that's the case in your family, I think that you're blessed and you're lucky. In my family, that's not the case. Um, um, most of the women in my family are large or overweight or obese and um, struggle a lot with weight issues. And um, that's a, a, a lot to deal with. But I think one thing that has helped me is to help maintain a healthy weight over the years, even going through, like I said, I've had three children, um, um, is intermittent fasting, um, which I started incorporating back in my 30s, I believe, probably mid, mid early 30s um, that I incorporated inter intermittent fasting and I've never been a dieter I don't believe in dieting I do believe in having a healthy lifestyle I do believe in nurturing your body I do believe in um, taking care of yourself I've never been a fan of dieting just because I've, I have seen personally in the healthcare industry that dieting is not an effective way to lose weight, which is why the majority of people who are on diets are not successful. And, um, but I do, however, believe in eating healthy and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Um, let me get off that soapbox. <laughs> but intermittent fasting is one thing that I found was really um, a great um, way for me to maintain eating the foods that I you know desire to eat and it helped me to not overeat over the years right because if I had an in, an eating window which I've done different types of intermittent fa fasting it actually became just honestly a part of my lifestyle um, for many years I never ate before 1 o'clock p.m. Um, and I'm not telling you to do that I think you should do your research but for me having that window just naturally helped to cut calories it helped me avoid things like you know a lot of people in the last five to ten years it became very popular to like have a huge starbucks um drink in the morning <laughs> and i always tell people that is not coffee that's a cake in a cup <laughs> that is dessert in the case you didn't know but like for me it um helped me to avoid like having 2000 calories of a starbucks beverage in the morning um because i was I was intermittent fasting. And then besides, like I said, my other general um, rule was that I, I don't drink my calories. So for me, um, it helped me to avoid a lot of unnecessary calories, unnecessary sugar, chemicals, those types of things, which I think are really, really helpful for staying fit, maintaining your health over the long term. That doesn't mean you can't ever have, you know, a treat or a sugary beverage. We don't want to restrict ourselves, right? But if by and large you spend the majority of your time incorporating normal boundaries and routines to maintain your health, it does pay off. It does pay off. Trust me. The next one that I would say that I found has been really helpful and that I think would help you would be uh, avoiding processed foods. Avoiding processed foods as much as is within your control, um, within your community, because I know that the truth is you're going to have to eat what's available to you, but wherever you have control to make choices to choose healthy, wholesome food that as, is as close to what it would be in its natural form, then that's going to be the best for your body. Um, I am one of those people who don't believe that calories are just calories. So I'm not somebody who believes that if you eat a 200 calorie Snicker, it's equivalent to eating a 200 calorie apple. Nope, not at all. I believe wholeheartedly in good nutrition, that it's better for your body, that it does um, wonders for your health if you consume uh, foods that are feeding your body fuel and nutrients. And also if you're avoiding the processed foods and sugar. <laughs> you're gonna hear me, you're gonna probably get tired of me saying that one, but yeah, sugar. Um, so the number four, I would say, uh, another thing that I found that has helped me over the years, um, in maintaining my health, maintaining my fitness level has been to, um, 
avoid avoid keeping junk food in the house right like even when my kids were small growing up not to say that we never had um treats and and snacks and things of that nature but generally i didn't keep large amounts of those types of things in the house on a regular basis so if something happened i might get that thing for that day but i wouldn't just when I went out for my grocery shopping, two weeks of grocery shopping, I wouldn't get two weeks worth of donuts and two weeks worth of cakes and two weeks worth. <laughs> because it was just for me, if it's in the house, I'm going to eat it. So I just generally set myself up to not necessarily say I'm never going to have something like that. But if I am going to have something like that, I have to get out and go get it. I have to make an effort and added effort. I have to create that barrier so that it's not so easily accessible to me where I can just run in the kitchen. Because if I can, I'm, I'm going to do it <laughs> and you're going to do it, too. Let's just, just be real. Like it's, it's, it's almost impossible to have that stuff in the house all the time. And you're going to be lying to yourself when you say that you're not going to eat it. You're going to eat it. You gonna eat it. <laughs> so keeping it out of the house, I have found has been one of the most um, beneficial things. Number five, movement. Incorporating movement into your daily routine and into your lifestyle is so, so important. Um, so yeah, I love when I see people beginning to incorporate movement because it's one of the, I think one of the most effective things that you can do to maintain your health. And one thing that like for me as a nurse that I saw over the years of taking care of patients, right? Taking care of people, especially those who develop chronic illness. What I noticed the pattern was that the people who got the most movement, the people who walked the most on a regular basis, like daily basis, people who were swimming, they were the ones who had the best health overall, over the long term. They were the ones who did the best, right? They maintained their mobility the longest. They maintained their health the longest. And um, yeah, so for me, I have always prioritized getting daily walks, getting out, getting fresh air as much as is possible. Um, and then of course, yeah, incorporating exercise. But even if you're not able to exercise, we all go through seasons of life where maybe having a dedicated time of exercise is just not feasible. Um, but having movement built into your routine um, and an essential component of your routine, I think is priceless it's priceless because it's one of those things that's going to um, be a huge investment in your health overall. So no matter where you're at in life, where you're, if you're in a season where you can't get to the gym, you're recovering from some procedure, so you can't be hitting the gym, that's understandable. Get up and move. Find ways to get a daily walk, a couple times a day get walks. Um, do incorporate movement into your day. Um, and, and find things that are fun, like movement and exercise. I think a lot of the reasons why people don't maintain uh, um, regimens over the long term because they don't enjoy it. And the truth is, if you don't enjoy something, you're really not going to do it long term. That's just the reality. So I think for me, it's been really important to um, to give myself permission to change it up, right? Like sometimes I like roller skating. Sometimes I like dancing. Sometimes I like um you know, getting in the gym. Sometimes I do yoga. I don't have any loyalty to any one type of movement, but as long as I'm doing something that's active, that moves my body and that I'm enjoying in that season, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, of course, the next one, I mean, it probably goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it, which is to avoid smoking, avoid drinking and alcohol, um, drugs, those types of things. They're just gonna age you. They're going to um, not put you in the best form of health. Um, and so, yeah, avoiding a lot of those things, not to say that I've never uh, had alcohol. Um, I enjoy a little bit of wine here and there, but in terms of making it like a normal everyday thing, um, my body just doesn't really like it, to be honest. It makes me more tired. Um, I miss out more of my time. You know, it's just at, at some point it's just don't be don't even be worth it. So 
Um, seven, I would say being um, having just a general attitude of gratitude and being optimistic and having a sense of hopefulness uh, with regard to your, your future and positivity really helps, I believe, to maintain your health and maintain a youthful energy. Um, it helps you to be more positive. And I think that that's one of the beautiful things of, you know, helping to maintain your fitness, right? Being positive, um, looking forward to the future, not feeling like everything is all bad not always focusing on the negative things and the bad things because if you focus on that stuff all the time that's what you're going to see that's what you're going to attract and the truth is if we're honest with ourselves there are more positives in our lives than negatives but if you spend more of your time focusing on the negatives that's just what you're going to see um um another thing that really has helped me over the years too is having um a prayer routine having a meditation routine i really really think that that really helped to preserve me if i'm honest during the most difficult seasons of my life and i've been through some heavy seasons right i told you i'm divorced i have kids um this is not my first rodeo right um i've been through some tough times and if you have kids you you know that right this this is life we we all have difficult difficult times and um really just having um time in a relationship with God and having a prayer life and being able to connect with a higher power than my own has, I believe has really preserved helped to you know keep me more optimistic and has helped to preserve uh, my health mentally right my health spiritually uh, my desire to um, my desire to want to take care of myself has been positively impacted. Um, uh, the next thing that I have on my list is incorporating healthy, fun, uh, activities into your, your routine. Um, I think this is important because it's so funny because, um, a lot of our entertainment, I call it entertainment can, can be built around food. And over the years, honestly, when my kids were coming up, I really enjoyed doing things that are entertainment, entertaining. But one of those things for me was never like just eating. It was never fun for me to just like eat as a form of entertainment. So whenever, not to say that we never did it, like, but what I'm saying is generally speaking, when we want it to be entertained, I always like to challenge us to think of things to do as a family that wasn't that wasn't built around going out to eat, if that makes sense. So like going bowling or, you know, going to, um, going roller skating or those types of things. Um, I always like to emphasize that over the years as opposed to what do we want to do for fun? Let's go eat. What type of food? Let's do this type of food. Because if you make food your main source of entertainment, I think sometimes that we, our brains can get lazy to think of other things to do. And I really loved to try and um, entertain myself and my family with things that were physically active. So, so that's another thing to do. Try to think of what you like to do for fun and make sure that you have things that you can do for fun that are not just food, right? I mean, food is fun. Let's, let's be, be honest. Food is fun. I, we eat. like We like to eat for fun. But we don't want that to be the only thing that we do for fun when we want to be entertained. Um, of course, yeah, if you know me, you know this one was coming. <laughs> you know this one was coming and that is sleep. Sleep is so important. Sleep is so valuable to our health, to our well-being, to our mental health, to our attitude, just to our ability to engage and even to just make healthy choices, to have the energy to even want to um, invest in healthy things and do things that are going to improve our health. You have to have sufficient sleep. So making sure that you get to sleep, very important. And then we're going to round it up here. I'm going to close out with a couple more, <laughs> a few more. Laughter. Laughter. I believe that laughter is a form of medicine. Um, again, it has to do with changing the 
chemistry of your brain, right? When you're focused on positive things, if you're intentionally finding things that generate laughter, I think it just changes the chemistry of your body and your ability to receive positive things and your ability to think in positive ways. And that definitely, I think, has a positive impact of your health, especially over time, especially as we're aging. Um, I've definitely seen and come across some some bitter people, some bitter and angry people. And they never had to tell me they were bitter and angry because I could see the bitterness and the anger in their face. <laughs> and I decided many, many years ago, I did not want to be that person. I did not want to be that person that was so bitter and angry that you could literally see it in my face without me opening my mouth. Uh, I would love to be someone that is looked at and say, wow, you know, she looks like a kind, loving, peaceful person, but I don't want to, I don't want to look like bitterness and angry, you know, um, and 10, is this 10? Y'all know I'm not good with keeping up with these numbers. <laughs> next, how about I just say next, choose your battles, choose your battles. Um, I think especially like I'm gonna talk to the black women now this video is for everybody but for the black women let me tell you choose your battles you don't have to fight for everything everything is not your fight okay um, we can love our people we can love where we're at we can love our community and not necessarily feel like it's our duty to fight um, it's not my duty. I'm not a fighter. I, I've known that for many, many years. I grew up with brothers and uh, no sisters. And one thing I knew from the time that I was young was that I was not a fighter. <laughs> Maybe somebody has to fight to help defend us, but it wasn't going to be me. <laughs> I will cheer you on from the window. I will, I will write a letter. You know, I'll make a phone call. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be out here fighting. So choose your battles because you don't want to put your mind and your body and your health through all of this stress that's unnecessary. Choose strategically. Sit down and decide what it is that you want to choose to fight for in your life. And maybe just choose one, right? Because I think that if you sit down and you identify what you feel that is your what you feel is worthy to be fighting for then you can kind of set a boundary that when something else you see something else on social media or someone else is let's be honest a lot of it is social media right giving you this energy to want to fight something you can say okay that's a, that's very important and it should be handled but it's not my job right because my job is to fight over cancer right like uh, children with cancer that's me my assignment is not saving you know, people from XYZ trauma. So I think it's really important to choose your battles, um, decide and set a boundary. And that if it's not for you, if you've decided that that's not your battle, that you go ahead and exempt yourself from taking on that fight. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, finally, I would just say this because I've done this and I don't want to neglect to include this in here because I do feel that it's helped to keep me healthy. I have regularly incorporated vegetarian fasts in my life. Um, not super long term, but maybe a month, a couple months out of the year. My body, to be honest, does require meat. I was a vegetarian for um, like a year, over a year, and my body didn't like it. I'll link that video below with more details if you're interested, but it's not for everybody, right? And I realized that, unfortunately, choosing a type of diet now is political and some people get angry listen to your body but i will say that um doing vegetarian fasts or cutting out meat temporarily i have found has had some health benefits uh, even even though i couldn't maintain it long term because my body does require meat um, but doing that for a season helped me to uh just give my body different types of nutrition that otherwise when I'm eating meat because I get full on meat uh, I have the space to to try I get to try different fruits different vegetables um, I get to try different recipes because otherwise I just don't right like when I'm eating meat but doing those fasts for like a few weeks a month two months at a time in the past I think has really helped me it helps to kind of like detox my body give me clarity 
um, just give me a, a boost of nutrients and I think that that has helped me so I hope that you find those tips helpful let me see what are you doing to help maintain your health drop me a comment below let me know and uh, thank you for joining me till next time bye